A question I get asked a lot on this channel is, how are those sequels to Dune, Mike? Well, I usually just say, hey, I think there's going to be some stuff that works for you. Maybe there's some stuff that don't. Now that the movies have got this kind of in the pop culture zeitgeist, I'm hearing a lot of, well, the Dune sequels suck. And I'm here to tell you, no, they do not. But are they for you? Hmm. Hey, what's up, bookworms and fighting Fremen? We are here today to talk about Dune by Frank Herbert, but more specifically, the sequels to the original Dune from 1965. We're talking about all of those other books in the series by Frank Herbert. So something, I, like I said, I hear a lot is that the Dune sequels all suck, and I think that there are some things that maybe some people don't like about them, but I do not think that that is the appropriate phrase to use. Now, here's my copies from high school. As you can see, they're quite beat up. I was very, very obsessed with this. You can also tell that books number five and six are not much as much as, as worn as books two, three, and four are. So uh, I have those copies. I've never been able to get rid of them. I also got these updated ones that they did a couple years back. I got the deluxe editions of Messiah and Children over there. Besides me letting you guys know that I have a problem, I think what it, I'm trying to tell you here is I may buy multiple copies of the same book, but I have to like that book. If I didn't like these sequels, I think that uh, I, I wouldn't be buying multiple copies of them. Now, with these, there is just a little bit of a nostalgic attachment because, like I said, Dune to me was super special when I was younger. It still is. But, you know, this was basically just like my, me finding my way as a teenager. So I'll never be able to get rid of these books. But the thing is, is I hear a lot of, well, Similar to what happened with Star Wars, uh, when they got acquired by Disney and they decanonized all the EU, everybody was like, ah, who cares? All those books suck anyway. And I was like, first off, I guarantee you haven't read every single Star Wars book to throw that broad generalization that they all suck. I feel the same way about the Dune sequels is that I, I, most people that say that, I feel like they've just kind of heard that. So they just kind of just recite that as, is, as, it's, as it's like fact. And most people haven't even read them. Now, a lot of people, they bounce off of Doom Messiah because there is some things about it that we'll get into that isn't going to work for everybody when they realize this isn't quite the series I felt like I was getting when I read Dune for the first time. So, uh, it's not true that they suck, but again, are they for you? That's going to kind of come to question here. Now, look, I'm only talking about the books that Frank Herbert wrote. We'll not be talking about Kevin J. Anderson. We'll not be talking about he who shall not be named, uh, the son Brian. We're only talking about the Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. Those books should only be used as toilet paper. So if you're looking for me to defend those books, this is the wrong video for you. I am not a fan. I consider that very much just fan fiction. I do not consider it canon, and neither should you. So there will be no spoilers for the sequel books here, guys, but I might have to mention book one a little bit to kind of get into what these sequels are really about. So six books written by Frank Herbert. Uh, what was really originally called the Dune Trilogy was Dune, Dune Messiah, and Children of Dune. Then God Emperor kind of came along and it was, I call it now, I call it like a bridge book. You know, I feel like it's, it's, it's just takes place so much longer after those first three do. And it kind of it, it kind of con continues and concludes the Atreides family story. So I feel like I want to kind of count it as, you know, a, an important book here. And then you have uh, Heretics of Dune and Dune Chapter House, which Frank sadly passed away before he was able to complete. And 20 years later, his son decided to come along and bastardize the ending. And it just made it even worse in hindsight. So well, with me, I want to mainly talk about those. Uh, I'm going to have to keep bringing it up, guys, because look, here's a simple way I can put it. If Frank Herbert was the Lord of the Rings, then I think that Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, that's Rings of Power. That's kind of what they did to this universe. So that's why I have such disdain for it. This isn't a Christopher Tolkien thing here where someone handled this with care. But again, I digress. We're here to talk about the sequels. So let's begin, guys. Let's talk about why I think the sequels are good. I'm going to kind of break it down a little bit by each book here. Let's start with uh, Dune Messiah. Now, I think with this, it hits you in the face right away things you might have missed from the original. Because I've seen this a lot now with the new movie that just came out. So a lot of people are calling Paul as a heroic figure, and he's not a heroic figure. And I feel like it's even more apparent in Denny V's movies than it is in Frank Herbert's original book. But when you, in case you missed it, the very first chapter of this is going to hit you with a, oh, 
okay, I, I guess I didn't see that coming. So I remember this shocking the hell out of me when I first read it as a teenager. And obviously I can go back now and pay more attention to some of uh, those prescient moments that Paul has in Dune 1965 and say, yeah, it was all there for you. But uh, the warning signs, the cost of accepting his role as Mahdi, uh, that's uh, that's expanded upon greatly. And uh, I, I think you get the return of several characters. But, you know, those warning signs, I think, were all there. And this just kind of brings them to forefront that, yes, there are very many things that Paul cannot prevent. And he sees that this is the only way that he can do what it is he does. But when you first learn about what the golden path is in this book that doesn't conclude until God Emperor of Dune, you see there's some things that even Paul is like, that's no, that's too much for me. But I, I love that. Characters, like I said, you think we're gone. You get to see those again. The idea is that not all the Fremen are just kind of in lockstep now with with, with whatever Paul is, is kind of presenting or what has kind of happened over the time. Increased roles for Aaliyah Atreides. That's a big one for me. You get more for the Spacing Guild. You get more Benny Gesserit. You get more of Princess Irulan. That's uh, some really, really good stuff there. Uh, with Children of Dune. Now, with me, I always like to tell people this feels like the second half of the real sequel to Dune because I tell people if you read just Messiah as the standalone sequel to Dune you might feel disappointed but if you read these two together I feel like you get the full story of everything that's going that concludes Paul Atreides story and I think that is why you should do at least I tell people all the time read these together and you'll get the best effect of it so unless you're just absolutely just disgusted and you can't go on yeah read those two together if you can because i feel like that's going to give you the oomph of what the actual story is like i said he did market this as a trilogy for years before he decided to write god emperor and i think it does really hold up as a trilogy like i said you want to follow paul atreides story there you go but i also feel like there are some things that happen that you'll want to know about and you can learn about those in god emperor of dune now this is where the series kind of went to crazy town a little bit i'm not going to deny that it does go to crazy town a little bit this feels a little different than the others because it is more philosophical a little more navel gazy a little bit more look how profound i am there is a lot of conversations and stuff in here so it explains the truth of the golden path and uh you know what the lessons that that, that paul learns about in messiah but i like i said I, for some this is where they kind of this is the leaping off point and it is a hard book for me to recommend recommend man me reading this as a 15 year old completely just like warped my mind i wasn't ready for anything like that it's very very hard for read for me at 15 for different reasons it was a it was a different different reasons i had a harder time reading it again in my 20s because it was just like wow this is this is out there how did i read this when i was 15 you know but it's very like i said it's it's segment that covers about 3500 years so it, it is really really out there and that leads me guys to why the sequels are bad first and foremost i think people realize this isn't a story about Paul. It really is not. And that's hard for people because myself, like I said, I was the same age as Paul. I was going through a lot of the same things. I felt like obviously without royalty or being on a great you know, desert sand planet and things like that. But you know, some of those coming of age things I felt like I was going through in that book really spoke to me. So realizing that this story wasn't about Paul, he's not a Luke Skywalker type figure. That's really hard for some people to accept. And that might be why they bounce off. If you're just wanting a heroic tale, uh, Joseph Campbell's uh, Hero's Journey, this isn't the series you're looking for. It might feel set up that way in Dune, but when you realize this isn't a story about Paul, this is a story about the Atreides family and then some. So I think that having those expectations going in might work for you, but that's why a lot of people bounce off. Like I said, a lot of people will start reading Messiah and they'll be like, what in the world? This is not what I signed up for. And I say, this isn't what I would call fun books, guys. It's like, look, I love Dune. I love it for the ideas. I love it for just the, everything that he presented, this world that he created. I love it for all kinds of things. The scope, the originality, the theme, those are all great things. But if you're just wanting like a swashbuckling space adventure, Dune is not that series. It really is not. So I, I think that if you're just wanting like a pew pew spaceships, it's not going to be the series you're looking for. And a lot of people always struggle with the fact that, you know, these books are mostly dialogue. And even more so in the sequels, I do believe. Something I can't really disagree with is a lot of people will say that these books are depressing, that the sequels are depressing. Yes, they are very depressing. Uh, space isn't kind, you guys, and this is a very, very brutal, brutal universe. And you're going to see characters you love come and go, and you're going to see things that you thought it was going one way, and it does not. And he's going to completely surprise you with those things. To me, those are good things. These are all good things. But yes, it is a very dark story. And there is very some things, there are some themes that are going to be very hard for you to get behind. And I understand that. But the thing is, is, like to enjoy the story, I don't feel like you have to get behind them. You can just say, 
I'm enjoying the story. I don't have to agree with it, but you're never going to figure out where Frank's going with it if you don't, if it hasn't been spoiled for you. Also, you notice I didn't mention Heretics of Dune or Dune Chapter House when I talked about the good, because guys, I, I didn't really care for these books, honestly. Uh, it's one of those things where I felt like if Frank had gotten to finish the story, maybe I'd seen what he was aiming for. But I was, to me, it was like once the Atreides story's over, once the Golden Path has kind of resumed, or I'm sorry, concluded, I don't know if I really want to resume with the story. And I just, I didn't really appreciate where he was going with it at this point. I feel like he, again, if he had been able to finish that story, maybe it would have come around full circle and it would have meant more to me. But uh, those are the ones I've only read once a piece uh, because I was just, eh, on them. So that's why I don't really mention them there. But um, yeah, it, maybe if he had been able to finish it, who knows what could have happened. But as for my final thoughts, I think what makes Dune so special is that there's nothing else like it. You know, this is not an adventure series. This isn't Star Wars. You know, so many things that Star Wars did borrow from Dune. It was basically, if you say, if someone said, hey, let's make Dune, but make it for general audiences into a movie. That's kind of what Star Wars turned out to be. And it worked out great. It really, really did. That's a universe I adore. I love Star Wars. I've always said that Dune feels like Star Wars for adults. And you can see that because that's where the primary influence for everything. That and Flash Gordon, you know, serials, things like that were kind of, and samurai movies were kind of like the influence for Star Wars. All of George Lucas's influences. He's never hid the fact that a lot of these things he did kind of borrow and give a hat tip to do as far as how much he borrowed he borrowed too much you know that's kind of up for you but that isn't really a discussion here so you got a lot of deep thought i think and and a questioning of the universe kind of feelings when you read these kind of books and you'll see like i said beloved characters will come and go you really are like does this guy have like no heart so i think if you've been a grimdark reader you've read like a song of ice and fire you're okay with your characters coming and going i think but uh yeah it just it feels like there's a hopping off point in this series for everybody. You know, I when new people ask me if they should read the sequels, I'm like, okay, well, did you really, really like book one? Because I think you can treat book one as a standalone. Sure, it has kind of a cliffhangerish ending, you know, but I feel like it's like in that way of, you know, you can kind of draw your own conclusions to how they got to Happily Ever After. With this, it's like, okay, if you liked book one and you want to know what happened, yeah, go ahead and pick up Doom Messiah. I always encourage people to read Doom Messiah and Children of Doom together, like I said. But, you know, if you get that far and you're happy with where the story goes, you don't really have any interest in what happens to Leto the second after that, then I think, okay, yeah, stop. Because this is not going to be a book for everyone. However, I will tell people, you want to know everything about the Golden Path, read Dune 1 through 4. That is the way to go. That is the way I'm always going to recommend it. You just can't get enough. You can't say goodbye. Then, yeah, go ahead and pick these up. But for the love of God, stop. Do not do not read the Brian Hurt books, please, for your sanity. So, uh, again, I think Messiah just as the standalone sequel to Doom. Yeah, that's why I think some people will end up feeling a little disappointed and they'll say, oh, the Doom sequels suck, even if they've only read one of them. But uh, I, I can't recommend anybody who goes past God Emperor. I really can't. So as much as I love this universe and as much as like his writing still great in these books, it's just like it just... I was I, I was exhausted. I was I was done with my Atreides family story, and so you know it's like trying to go into Star Wars after the Skywalkers. You know, it's like is it is it a cool universe? Yeah, is it enough to keep me around? Well, you got to have a really really good story. So uh, I again is incomplete. So that's kind of just how I felt about it. So once the Atreides story ends, I kind of felt like I checked out mentally, and uh, yeah, I, I I always recommend people. You really want to know the whole. Atreides Family Saga, Go Through the Golden Path, which is all the way through God Emperor. So again, like the Star Wars EU, no, not all of these books are good. But again, the blanket statement that all of the Dune sequels suck, I, I want to flip a table every time I hear it because there are so many things in these three books that are every bit as influential to me as Dune was. You know, sir, sure, Dune 1 is my favorite book of all time. I think it's incredible. I treat it like a Bible. It is sacred text to me. It has been a huge part of my life for 30 years. But I'll never forget how I felt reading each one of these and struggling with things. And to me, challenging a reader where they struggle a little bit, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Dune is not a series you read because it's easy. You know, and I don't feel like it's work. But I feel like it's something that like it's going to challenge the reader. And not just because uh, some things are difficult to understand, rather. It's more of challenge you with some of the themes and the ideas that he presents in here. And these are the things I've held close to my heart for years and has shaped my worldview, honestly. And that is not hyperbole. But again, to say that all the books are bad, that's just being just completely ignorant of this incredible, incredible world that Frank Herbert did create. So guys, I hope that you will pick up Doom Messiah. I know a lot of people now have seen 
the, the two movies and they're very interested in knowing what happens next. They don't want to wait and see what happens. And then they're saying that they're not even going to redo. That's okay. You don't want to redo. You can pick up Doom Messiah. Some things will be like confusing to you. Like why is Aaliyah uh, all grown up? And again, there's a big time jump between the first book and the second book. So I feel like you can jump in there. I do encourage you to go back and read Dune Part 1, especially if you love the movie because I feel like you'll see some things that I talked about in, in uh, or me and Christopher talked about in our spoiler review for Dune Part 2 where we said there's some things that you know were left out and this guy's kind of confused about where he's going to go with Dune Messiah. But yeah, I, I think you owe it to yourself. Pick up Dune Messiah, Children of Dune. Read those two together if you really, really love Book 1. I think that you will enjoy what you find there, even if you are once you recover from the shock of some of the things that do happen, like I said, in the very early parts. But guys, that is the Dune sequels and why I do not think that they all suck. There are things I do not like about each and every one of them, but I do think there are some great, great things in there. And I think you owe it to yourself to not just listen to what other people say and read it and decide for yourself. That's the, always the best way. Don't trust reviews, man, because everybody's experience when it comes to the world of Dune is going to be different. So go your own way, forge your own path, and hopefully it's not the golden path. So have you read the Dune sequels, guys? What do you think of them? What is your favorite? Were you as shocked as I was when you read Messiah for the first time? I would love to hear these stories, and I hope you will check them out. So drop them in the comments, guys, and let me know, and I will talk to you there.